What's going on guys? Big Time 110 here. And today, I want to talk to you guys about a ROM called MIUI 12 for the OnePlus 7 Pro. Now this ROM is one of those ROMs that people like to like or people like to hate. Depending on what side you are, you might be curious to see how it performs. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to show you the features of the ROM and show you around the ROM so you can decide what you want to do. So with that being said, let's get into the ROM. So at first glance, when you come into your phone and you turn it on, you notice that it has all on display. Double tap is also working here. So you can just double tap, turn on your, your phone. Unfortunately, since uh, the fingerprint reader is non-existent here and doesn't work, you have to rely either on your pin, password, or face unlock. Now, as you can see, this ROM to me is one of those ROMs that is really beautiful. Aesthetically, the ROM is very pleasing. Those little touches where you barely bring down the notification and it blurs the background, that's beautiful to me, you know? And all the animations that come with it, they're really, really good. Even when you go to a different page, you'll notice the animation in the wallpaper change. And that to me is, is really beautiful. Moving on to the camera real quick. Now, I tried to use the camera for photos, it works. But for whatever reason, when you use video, it just does that. So if you're relying on video, this is ROMing for you. If we go to the home screen options, you'll notice that we do have option to change the, the launcher. But also, most importantly, we have the option to have a classic without the drawer or with the app drawer. And to me, that's a good option there. I don't like my icons all over the place. Now, for whatever reason, when I was testing the, the hertz in the frames per second, the ROM didn't fully go to 90 frames per second and it didn't even show me the refresh rate. So I'm not sure what's going on here, but I just noticed that in some of the apps, kind of dark themed, there was a lot of flickering. You see it at night. So I don't know if that has something to do with this, but on your normal usage, you will not see a difference though. Now, one thing I did not understand is why we have this app pre-installed. I appreciate any app that XDA developers have because they always work and I used this app before on my regular phone but for whatever reason it wasn't working here no matter how much I tapped it was not going to turn on the flashlight for me if we go to my device here on settings you just have all your specs you got the factory reset and all that if you go to security status you can just check the updates and all that stuff we got wireless LAN, Bluetooth, we got connection and sharing. You get all these options here, like printing, Miracast, etc. We go on the location, you see all the apps that we use in your location and all the ones that have requested it. So you could turn it on or turn them, turn it off. If we go to lock screen here, we do have the always on display and you have the option to show items on a schedule, what you wanna show and what you wanna turn on. And also we have lots of styles though. There's something for everyone here. There's so many styles that I doubt somebody's not going to find something here. And you could always use your own. As you can see, so many. Okay, well, enough of that. Let's go back. We also get your post notifications here. They work really good and you get the choice to choose blue and red or the one with the little star lights, which is pretty cool as well. We have race to wake. We also have always show notification, double tap to wake or turn on your screen. You got the power menu. We have a lot of options here when it comes to clocks for your lock screen. So choose what you like. We got some side panel shortcuts, which I don't use. And you also choose your charging animation from these three options here. And you get other shortcuts here, for like the camera. If we go to display here, we have the display size, your brightness levels, you have reading mode, we have color scheme. Now you can have auto, saturated, original color, 
But me, I leave it in auto because it's pretty good. But you can also mess with its color temperature if you're not satisfied with it. So make it yours. We do have an anti anti flicker mode, which it works and is really good. So I suggest you turn that on. We have a dark mode, which I always enable. We have system fonts and we have some options here. I'm pretty sure everybody's going to find something they like. So for me, you already know Google Sans. We also have the text size. If you want it smaller or bigger, you could just choose that there. If we go to sound and vibration here, you can choose all your notifications, your alarms, your, you know, everything sound assistant. You have all those options in here. If we go to notifications here, you have all the apps that you want to turn on the notifications for the lock screen floating or just the notification badges. So just turn on and off the ones you don't want to see. If we go to home screen here, you got all these options, changing the title style, the icons, the number of columns on your folders, and even the blur effects. Yeah, your wallpaper, your themes. Now themes, they do work, but I just didn't want to buy or any and log into a me account. So here is the password security. Here's where we have your password, your face unlock. And again, unfortunately, it's a fingerprint unlock, which it doesn't work. And I know that's going to be a big issue for a lot of you guys because banking apps, you have to have your fingerprint. We go to privacy protection. Here we have kind of like a, some stats of the apps that have been using your permissions and what permissions and when. I, I think that's pretty cool. We go to battery and performance. Now, here's the thing. The standby time on this ROM is really good, but the screen on time for me wasn't that good. As you can see, I barely maxed out three, four hours at most. Most of the time it was like two and a half, maybe three hours, but the standby was really long. So I don't know uh, how that works for you guys, but I mean, for me, it's cool. Now, one thing I gotta say, this kept popping up for me which was services and feedback is requesting data online. Now, this ROM doesn't have the best privacy and all that. So when I saw this and just knowing that I cannot even disable this thing, it kind of made me concerned about my privacy, you know, and I'm not even a privacy guy. So if I can turn off something, I don't know. But to me, that was kind of fishy. If we go to dual apps here, we have all the apps that you could use as dual apps, meaning you could have two uh, different accounts with the same app. We also have the app lock. So if you want to protect some of your apps with a with a pin or a password, you're welcome to do that. And we do have additional settings here. Now, under languages and input, I want to show you the languages because a lot of people always ask me how many languages does it support. So here are all the languages that it supports. You have your full screen display here for your gestures. You can get the buttons or you can get your on-screen full screen gestures. And here are the gestures in case you're wondering. Under button shortcuts, we have all these shortcuts here. Like double press the power button for the camera, etc. Long press the power to turn on the torch. You know, the usual. I'm pretty sure you guys can mess with that and find all the shortcuts you need. Now, we do have a quick ball and I like this feature because if you have small hands, you could have a little quick ball always near your fingers, you know, your thumb so that you could always access the main menus or the main options. 
and you can move it anywhere you want and it'll stay there and it'll hide. You even have a one-handed mode, so if you have small hands, there you go. We have a clear speaker setting for, I have no idea what. We do have a game boost option for your games and a video toolbox that comes included in the options. We have floating windows. These are for your notifications. You can move them. This is how you open them. And we do have a second space. This is something that I wish a lot of other ROMs or phone manufacturers would include. Think about it like this. Let's just say you have a work profile and you don't want to mix both. Well, with this, you don't have to. You simply press on the switch button, enter your pin, and then voila, your work profile. Nothing personal there. There's no personal files. Everything's just work. If you want to switch back to your normal personal profile, just press the switch, enter your pin, and boom, we're back with our own profile with all your stuff, all your personal apps, everything, just how you left it. That is something I like. That's really cool. Now, this ROM has a lot of features. You know, it has a scanner feature, which wasn't working. I don't know why it wasn't there. but also it does have a lot of other tiles like the screen recorder. That one works, the cast, almost everything's working. The only thing that didn't work from here is the NFC. And to me, that's a big no-no because I need fingerprint for my banking apps and I need NFC for my contact list banking when I go to the bank. I just use NFC and put my pin, get my money out. That's it, simple as that. And I don't have that here. But guys, would I recommend this ROM? I gotta say that it's a it's a it's a difficult situation here to recommend this ROM because as much as I want to recommend it, there's a lot of things that are missing. And not to sound ungrateful for this, I do appreciate all the hard work the developer does to bring this ROM to us. And I'm not trying to bash the ROM. The only thing I'm trying to do is make sure that the people here understand what's working, what's not, and what type of experience they should expect from the ROM. And to me, I need to be honest to everybody. So would I recommend this ROM? Only if you're curious enough to check it out. As a daily driver, I would not. There's a lot of things that are too important to be missing in a ROM. Battery life is not bad. Once again, standby time is good, but you would have to decide if those things will keep you from installing this ROM. So guys, with that being said, thank you so much for all your support. Thank you so much for everything. I really appreciate every one of you. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe because that motivates me. And I'll have more videos coming soon. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.